Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Worldwide Weather Watch. So I'm gonna be doing these videos more on a case-by-case -case basis based on what is going on across planet Earth, USA, wherever, Southern Hemisphere. We're just gonna look at fun weather events. And today we're gonna to take a look at the Northern Pacific Ocean. And right now we're started across Japan. So we've got this typhoon out here for uh, just south of Japan. And it's something interesting here about the Western Pacific Ocean. You've got places like Siberia, very cold air up across this region here, and typically anyway. And we've got probably the greatest buildup of heat on the planet here across the Western Pacific Ocean. And a lot of moisture involved with that. And when you get these typhoons and then you bring a lot of that moisture that wants to go towards the polar regions and you get some pretty extreme clashes of air masses here, like this typhoon, I think it's Nakri, N-A-K-R-I, uh, towards Japan. We'll take a look at that more here in a moment. But this is just now starting to enter. The westerlies become extra tropical and it will start that heat transfer process and become a mid-latitude cyclone up towards the Aleutian Islands. And we're going to get a pretty strong jet stream here over the next few days and over the next couple weeks as well it's going to start ripping across the north pacific ocean so we'll look at some fun details with that so first things a european here's the 12z you can see what is that uh, uh that typhoon down there and again japan to the far left you can see the Aleutian islands here there's alaska pacific northwest to the right and there's the hawaiian islands bottom center so if we put this into motion Pretty robust and interesting storm raking across western Alaska there. I was working at Alaska Airlines the last four days and working Alaska flights. So I did not, uh, you know, I don't regret not having to work with these storms coming in there. A lot of times you get flights canceled and things like that, but it can get pretty crazy there when you bring these strong storms up across this region. Usually these stronger storms don't come up across western Alaska like that. They stay across the Aleutians and some of the south Alaska coastline and across some of the Pacific Ocean here. But this one really moved across portions of Alaska. And I didn't look at this in too much detail, but I don't really have to to know that was a pretty impactful storm there for places like Nome, Kotzebue, up across the Red Dog Mine, and even towards the North Slope there. So if we continue on a little bit further on into next week, you can kind of see uh, some of these strong low pressure systems out there. Look at this 950 five millibar low there, very close to Adak, Alaska. And this is just one of many strong storms rolling across the Pacific Ocean. You can see we get a, a st strong system here as we go all the way towards British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest. We go towards next weekend. That is a pretty robust system. That would really kick off probably the first what we would call a windstorm here across some of the west coast of north america then you can see what happens across again north of the white islands south of the aleutian islands and it very another another very strong low 964 millibar beast and then another one moving across the aleutian islands another low pressure system races towards anchorage there as well and then yet another one as we go 300 hours out. And this is the product of a very strong jet stream that gets ripping across the Pacific Ocean. I mean, look at this 957 millibar low just south of Cold Bay. And there's Kodiak Island right there. So if we take a look at what is going on across the Pacific Ocean, we've got this very warm air across the intertropical convergence zone. This is where the heat is. The atmosphere is thick and there's a lot of moisture out there. And the sun, direct rays of the sun hit this area and heat it much more than they do the polar regions. So you get this big heat buildup and then you've got what's known as the trade winds here across the pacific ocean same thing with the southern pacific ocean and it brings this big uh, you know you got a lot of big heat buildup going on here across the western pacific and again there is that typhoon i talked about for japan now that is again nakri that i believe that's how you pronounce it na k-r-i and again that is right there in japan and you can see the track of this system here as it becomes extra tropical as we go on and through what is that october 15th uh, coming up here in about what three days so uh, again another look here at japan and you can see what that typhoon is right here and you can see the very cold air which is pretty typical there up across portions of siberia and russia and if i put that into motion you can see nakri kind of moving off uh, to the east there again this is about 925 millibars so about 2500 feet off the surface and if i scroll through there you can imagine the clash of air masses that does occur and that's why some of the strongest mid-latitude cyclones on the planet form here across the northern pacific especially towards the aleutian islands so if we back this up and we take a look at what's going on at about thirty-nine thousand feet there's the big ridge and we get this storm system impacting the pacific northwest and portions of california here over the next couple of days and then you can see the jet stream start to get active across the north pacific you can really see it get supercharged uh, we're starting to build up that cold air across the northern hemisphere and of course you've still got tropical systems a lot of warm air a lot of tropical moisture out there and it creates a pretty good 
pressure gradient. And that's why that jet stream hangs out in this region. And you can see that jet stream get extended all the way across Pacific Ocean. I mean, my goodness, look at this 205 knots. You're looking over, what, 225 miles an hour. <laughs> and you can imagine if you're flying from Seattle or San Francisco to Japan and you're a flight dispatcher or a pilot, you want to be going north to that when you're planning these flights. And unfortunately, the, the globe is curved, so it is a bit easier to go a bit north here, uh, north of this jet stream across some of southern Alaska there and back down in towards Japan, just for an example. And on the way back, you can pick up a lot of time if you get in that jet stream, as, lot, as long as you're not picking up too much turbulence. But now look at an accumulated 10 meter uh, wind gust, and this is in knots. So if I put this in motion, this is for that storm that I talked about that moved across a portion of Western Alaska. Very strong winds uh, with that storm that came across the area. And then you can see, as we go through the next few days, I'm just going to track through this, and you can see some of these storm systems rolling across the North Pacific. You can see that one towards the Pacific Northwest coming out across the Aleutian Islands. So you can see the, the jet stream and the storm track really gets raging here across the, the Northern Pacific Ocean. I'll scroll all the way out through hour 360. I mean, look at some of these wind speeds moving across the Gulf of Alaska. And something else, something else this may do excuse me, across some of the northern Pacific, it'll start to stir up the water a bit. So this should help in some areas with that big marine heat wave that we've had been going in the, the exceptionally warm waters here across the Pacific Ocean. Now, also wave action. If I scroll through here, you'll see some of these monster storms out there moving. You can see south of the Aleutian Islands again there as we go on in through what, Tuesday night of next week. You can see that track across the Gulf of Alaska and these additional mid-latitude cyclones. I mean, look at that one moving across the Gulf of Alaska. And this one as we go out towards 270 hours. And then look at that wave maker north of the Hawaiian Islands. That will spread a pretty good swell all the way down towards the Hawaiian Islands and towards the west coast of North America if that thing were to develop. I mean, look at that. The entire Gulf of Alaska just absolutely churning. So if we take a look here at that surface temperature anomaly and can really see the warmer waters, but when you get some of these stronger storms moving across, a lot of times this water is not too deep. So when you churn it up, you can start to really reverse these effects pretty quickly. And also this can be a combination of a lot of things like climate change and stuff like that, these big marine heat waves. But also, it's more of an indicator of, you know, you've got high pressure and things like that. When you've got high pressure over any given area, the wind's calm, the sun will, you know, the sun will heat up the surface layers of the ocean and whatnot as well. So just diving into that a little bit, but some very warm water off towards uh, Japan as well. But as we get some of these storms moving across this region, it probably will churn up some of this warmer water. And you can see a pretty good you know, signal there across some of California there, right off the offshore waters also. So if we take a look at total precipitation in inches, something fun to uh, look at here. And sorry, my cat just entered my room. You might've heard my door uh, creak open. Apparently I didn't close it, but you can see it, some of these uh, storms kind of moving that. Look at that storm track across the Northern Pacific Ocean and look at it slam into portions of Southern Alaska, Southeast Alaska, BC, and perhaps down towards Washington and Oregon as well. You can also see the intertropical convergence zone. That's pretty typical down there, but man, some of these typhoons injecting a lot of energy, mixing with that polar vortex and the very cold air, potent mid-latitude cyclones rip across the northern pacific ocean now something interesting here this is actually one year ago this is a, a surface ice and snow cover the orange is sir is ice there across you know the the arctic ocean and you can see snow cover across greenland portions of russia and sometimes this can give you a hint on just how cold maybe a winter will be if we get a good setup sometimes in the pacific northwest or in alaska you can get this cross polar flow where you bring some of this cold air from russia all the way across the north pole it can come down across western canada eastern you know central canada and back down into the lower 48 or into the pacific northwest the west coast as well so that's why it's worth paying attention a little bit to uh, what's going on across portions of russia and you can see it's not really too big of a difference from what I can tell so far. If I toggle back and forth, the sea ice is better here at this time across some of the uh, the Arctic Ocean. So that bodes a little bit better, maybe for some cold air building up there across some of the northern latitudes. And last year, this year, looks like a little bit more, maybe across portions of Alaska as well, in kind of a mixed bag, but a little bit further south coverage there across portions of Asia. So anyway, I just wanted to get this video out here because I'm going to start doing these videos maybe a couple times a week. And again, if you can think of anything or if you want to go ahead and message me on any of my channels, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch, the California Weather Watch, or the World Wide Weather Watch, the one you're on right now, 
go ahead and leave me if you'd like me to check out any systems out there. I'll be checking daily and looking for some fun stuff. But if you want to learn more or you want to hear more about any certain place on the planet, I'll check it out. No promises on if I can do a video on that or not, but I'll do my best and I'll be watching this over the next, you know, uh, I'll, I'll be watching this as we go. But I will not be doing these briefings on a daily basis. I'll be more concentrated on Pacific Northwest Weather Watch in California Weather Watch when it is uh, dealing with some active weather as well. So hopefully you guys are having a good day. I'll kick this video out here. Let me know what you guys think and let me know of any ideas you have and I'll talk to you guys later.